I wanna show you this IQ Link adapter from Corsair because it really opens the door to, again, using non-Corsair RGB lighting and using the IQ Link ecosystem to do it. Right now, filming this in late November, 2024, I don't see that you can get this separately, not on its own. The only thing I see it coming with is the Aurora LS lighting strips. If you haven't watched the video, check that out if you wanna know more about the lighting strips themselves. Now, what this box has on it is a single Corsair three pin RGB connector on it, the Molex style. We can then adapt the Corsair three pin connector to the standard five volt three pin ARGB connection. Uh, I've done a number of videos on this channel looking at that adapter cable that does that. Uh, but in fact, with the Aurora RGB strips, uh, the adapter cable is included, so there's no need to go purchase it. Basically, this just implements itself into the IQ Link uh, daisy chain. It's got a connector on both sides, so you connect the cable in, connect the cable out, and it's a device on the IQ Link system. A month or two ago, I looked at the uh, power supply RGB lighting strips. Those were kind of a similar device to just regular lighting strips. They just piggybacked on your power supply cables. Uh, they were fine, but as we talked about in that video, why can you not connect this to the IQ Link ecosystem? It had the same connection uh, scheme as this did. It had the little three pin Corsair RGB connector on it. So you needed a lighting node pro, a commander core, uh, XT or the Commander Pro. Well, in comes this little device. And again, you could argue that this device should have been released uh, with those power supply strips as well. Maybe they weren't quite done with it. Maybe some upcoming uh, you know, changes to those products will include this device. One of the things you can do with this is you can take this signal uh, you could plug it into an RGB hub and then you can open up the world to multiple devices because unfortunately it's only got one connector on here. The other thing this opens up to you is using any of the Corsair RGB fans that are not IQ Link enabled. Basically you can take the Corsair RGB fan hub, plug it into this connector because it's got the right connection. And then you can connect all of your non IQ link fans into here and get RGB control. Now what this would save you is like, you know, buying a commander core, Commander Core XT, but it kind of doesn't really save you from that. And again, that's the overarching part of this conversation is like, this is really cool. Does it make total sense? Uh, it's probably, it's not a perfect solution, uh, but I just like that it's here because it's another option for you to use. You know, because the problem with doing something like this is that takes care of the RGB function of say those fans, uh, but you still have the same problem with the PWM connection. So it's almost like in that case, just still go buy a Core XT or, you know, a Commander Core or something like that. Okay, so I've made all my connections here. And basically what I've done is coming from the IQ Link hub itself, I've just connected in the one side to the IQ Link adapter. And then from here, of course, I've got another QX120 uh, fan. And of course, from here, you can continue your IQ chain. But on the IQ Link adapter, I've taken the included cable. Uh, this is converting the three pin Corsair connector uh, into standard three pin five volt ARGB connection. And I've taken that and I've plugged that into the RGB hub. I've got, I've got this cool moon RGB hub here. There's nothing special or unique about this. There's tons of these out there. Uh, basically, I've got it in the controller mode right now, but I can put it in the motherboard mode meaning it will take the signal from the RGB port over here, which I've got connected into the IQ Link hub. But connected to the hub, I've got some non-Corsair or non-IQ Link RGB devices. I've got the Cooler Master uh, Halo fan, the Swafan 120 from Thermaltake, uh, and of course the hub itself has some RGB lighting on here as well. But once you get into IQ, make sure you have the latest version of IQ and do all of the updates uh, to get this working properly. Uh, but once you get uh, to the home screen, you can see your IQ Link adapter. Go ahead and click on it. And then the first place you wanna go is the lighting setup. From here, uh, you can set up the lighting channel and there's only one channel on this device. So you can hit the drop down box, but you get the main idea. You can select a bunch of Corsair devices like the triangles are in here, the Aurora strips are in here, uh, which we just did the video on. You can see like the eight LED fans are here, QL, LL fans are here. I wanna show you something that I think is gonna be easily overlooked. Now we've talked a number of times on this channel that I think what Corsair should do is they need to open up a feature in IQ that you can manually set the number of LEDs and kind of really just open the door to non-Corsair lighting. Now they haven't put a manual button in here, but they do have an automatic detection routine that I wanna show you real quick. So uh, connect up your device. In this case, I've got a Cooler Master fan here that's got 24 LEDs on this. If we hit the drop down box and select generic RGB lighting adapter, it automatically detects this generic RGB lighting strip. Now, if we select the settings icon here, 
it has an LED count button uh, with the start button on here. Now, when I first came into here and saw this, it wasn't doing anything for me. I was just clicking start and nothing was happening. So I asked Corsair about this button and what it did. And the response I got back from Corsair was this was just a diagnostics button, which didn't make any sense to me. It didn't do anything. Uh, but what I've discovered is if you're directly connected to the IQ Link RGB adapter, and you have the right device connected and you hit start, it will give you a number here. Now 24 is the number of LEDs. I've tried a number of different devices directly connected and it automatically detects however many LEDs you have, which is really cool in my opinion. So we'll go ahead and close that. Uh, you really don't need to go into the settings and use that button though. If it's a non-Corsair device, it seems to automatically detect that device and the correct number of LEDs when you start it up. Now that may not always be the case with every device, but the ones I've tested, that seems to work pretty good. Then of course it gives you a representation here. Now of course we have a fan connected and it's just detecting it as an RGB lighting strip, but that's essentially what it is. From here we can go into the lighting effects and it works just as you would expect. We can apply watercolor to it. Uh, any of the lighting effects uh, will work here. And we can select the individual LEDs here or a subsection of them. We can customize it just like we can any other device. Now I believe there is a limitation on how many LEDs you can connect up. For example, if we select six LLRGB series fans, uh, IQ gives us a warning that the brightness is going to be reduced. And of course, as soon as we drop that number down, uh, the warning goes away. So just be aware that there probably is a limitation on there. Uh, but I think IQ is going to be pretty good about just alerting you that it's going to reduce the brightness on that. But in my personal opinion, I think this is a really cool thing that Corsair has done. This kind of opens the door to all sorts of non-Corsair RGB lighting that you don't have to mess around with a whole lot. Now, we could ask for more, certainly. We could ask for a device that has more than one connector on it. We could also ask them for a device that just has standard 3-pin, 5-volt ARGB connections on it so that we don't have to use this adapter cable. During your setup, or if you're changing devices on this RGB adapter, if you've got a device plugged into it and then you just switch it out, uh, I've noticed that it just kind of retains the same number of LEDs and it doesn't necessarily immediately reflect the new number of LEDs. I've also noticed a couple of times if I've had no device connected to it and I connect a device to it without powering everything off, it'll come back up and nothing will work. It'll just be like there's nothing there. And I think that's just what it detected the previous time. Uh, but just be aware of that. If you're having some weird issues with this adapter, uh, power down your PC, unplug the power, maybe undo the IQ link cable, let it sit for a second and plug it all back in and try again. I also want to point out if you're using an RGB hub similar to the cool moon that I'm using in this video, it will not automatically detect any RGB LEDs on that hub. Now you still can get it to work, but watch the next section. I'm going to go over how you can select some other models in IQ and get that working. But let's come back to the drop down box on IQ. Now we've got the same problem that we've always had with non-Corsair RGB lighting in so much as that we can't really tell IQ how many specific LEDs are out there. The idea here always has been just choose a model that has more LEDs than the device that has the most on a setup like this. So in this case, let's go ahead and choose the LS Aurora strips and we'll tell it we've got one 350 millimeter strip. We can see that it lights the light up on each of these devices here. So, but let's select one here. And then of course we can come back to lighting effects. I've got a lighting link. We can choose watercolor. But at this point, it looks like all the LEDs are lit. Now that is the lighting link, so you can see it playing along with all of the other IQ Link devices in the system, which is really cool. Now we can come back here to lighting setup. And the Aurora strips is only one way to accomplish this. We can set a, some of these others here and it'll work just exactly the same way. So if we select like the eight LED fan and say we only have one fan, uh, what you'll notice is that it's only gonna light the first eight LEDs. This will demonstrate the example I talked about earlier because these fans have way more than eight LEDs on them. So now that we've selected the eight LED fan, and that's the only one on the chain, you'll notice like the SWA fan here is only partially lit. That's because it's only lighting eight LEDs and there's actually a lot more on this fan here. Uh, same with the halo light, we're not getting any of the outer ring lit. And of course, if you're using a Corsair specific device, the fans and things like that, those models are gonna match exactly how many LEDs. And so like if you're using the RGB hub for Corsair fans. Uh, this is going to be a little more intuitive is it's going to match exactly what you're setting up here. Same with the triangles and any of these devices here. As I mentioned, you can set up some of the legacy fans. So here I have some of the LL120 fans. Basically just go into your IQ link adapter, uh, hit the drop down box, select LL RGB fans, and we can tell that we have three of them. 
and it will color them here just like it normally does. We have the red, yellow, green. You would of course rotate these to match the orientation in your case. And then we can come back up to lighting effects and we can apply whatever lighting effects we want. But we can select all of the normal lighting effects, watercolor, arc, any of the LL121s that always looked really cool. Ping and pong here. But that's very cool. You will need the Corsair RGB hub, which is an additional cost. And of course, that just connects directly into the IQ Link ARGB adapter. So in effect, this is just kind of like a lighting node pro here, but it just gives you a conduit to use some of the legacy fans without having uh, the lighting node pro, the Commander or the Commander Core XT. But there you have it. That is the IQ Link adapter. I think it's a pretty cool device for kind of what it opens up and just gives you an option. If you have some of these devices and you want to implement it into IQ Link, then it's a great way to do it. At least it's there and available for you to do it. I, I'm hoping it demonstrates a little bit that Corsair is willing to kind of open the door a little bit to all of these things and open up the software. Again, you know, the overarching conversation here is if you're using IQ Link, the whole purpose of it, or one of the main purposes of IQ Link, was to simplify the installation. Right, so in a sense, this kind of defeats the purpose, but for some of these types of devices, you know, LED strips, you know, triangles and some of that kind of stuff, I don't know what else they would do, you know, unless the cost of those devices goes way up because they're implementing, you know, the IQ Link cables at the end of it, just with the nature of the way that has to connect into the system. So, but that's neither here nor there. That's a bigger discussion we could all have in the comments. Uh, whether you think this is justified, good, bad, or whatever. The fact is that I think it's better that this exists, so it does kind of open up uh, those opportunities for you and spares you having to buy another controller, but you got to buy this anyway. So again, we kind of, you know, we can kind of keep talking around it. Now, of course, in this mix, right, if we're just going to rant a little bit, this still doesn't fix the main problem with RGB lighting in the industry. Like, you know, none of this controls this ASRock motherboard in here. So it's still in there just doing its own thing. I've got to open up the ASRock software to change that or use Signal RGB or something like that. There's plenty of solutions out there. But I'd be interested to know what you think of the IQ Link adapter. Does this seem like just something that's unnecessary at this point, given the fact of, you know, the whole point of IQ Link in the first place? was to not be doing all of this stuff. I totally get that. Or are you of the opinion that you appreciate the fact of having the option? Because maybe you've got a device that you just would really like to uh, implement into IQ and wish you could sync it up. And you know, really you can't unless you go buy another Commander Core, Core XT or something like that, you know, that gives you the ability to uh, synchronize that. From, a, from my standpoint, you know, if I'm using IQ Link, I'm trying to keep it simple and I've really liked that system, but I like the idea of having the option to do this. But anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Uh, I hope you're having fun building your PCs and it's fun to kind of talk about RGB lighting and things like that. It's just all cool stuff, fun to mess with. Uh, but that's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching.